This is a Fox News alert. Nearly 60 Tomahawk cruise missiles descended on a Syrian air base near Homs, reportedly leveling most of the complex there. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Shortly after last night's strike, President Trump said this to the nation. No child of God should ever suffer such horror. It is in this vital national security interest of the United States to prevent and deter the spread and use of deadly chemical weapons. Well, some assume yesterday's strikes must be a one-off, America demonstrating its strength to the world, but others think, and in some cases hope fervently, this is merely the beginning of many more military interventions around the world. One of those people is Senator Lindsey Graham of the state of South Carolina, with whom we spoke earlier today. Senator Graham, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I think a lot of people watching what happened last night assumed it was a one-off, a response to right. the use of sarin gas uh, in Syria. You are saying, however, that the United States ought to, ought to add 7,000 troops on the ground. That we need more troops, right. like we have in Iraq. Right, in Syria, like we have in Iraq, yeah, right, right. to depose uh, Bashar al-Assad. No, to, uh, to defeat ISIL. So not to affect regime change? No, regime change comes when we train up Syrians. Okay. The Syrians will take care of Assad. Uh, ISIL is a direct threat to the homeland. Assad's not. I'm not suggesting that Bashar Assad is going to attack America. I do believe ISIL would if they could. And we have about 6,000, 7,000 troops in Iraq. And if we had about that same number, we could take Raqqa sooner and we wouldn't have this Kurd-Turkey fight. More Arabs would join the fight if you had more American troops. So I think you're going to see a ramp up of American troops, not as frontline fighters, but trainers, advisors, special forces to take ISIL down quicker. I'm proud of President. So a whole new war is what you're calling for? Uh, no, an end to an old war. <laughs> the war has been going on for eight years. It's not a new war. It was no, I mean the war in Syria. We haven't been involved in the war in Syria for eight no, years. No, no, and it's been, it's been a disaster for us. Look at what happened in Europe. Look what came from Raqqa, Syria in terms of Europe. Sent, you know, radical Islam has flourished under the caliphate. Um, radical Islamists are, are being uh, appearing everywhere. You had it in, in Switzerland. I mean, excuse me, in Sweden. So what I want to do is destroy the caliphate. And the way you destroy the caliphate is you take Raqqa. But it's a, I guess it's a little confusing. I don't think anyone would disagree that it's been a disaster in Syria for the Syrians and perhaps for the Europeans. And, and for us, eventually. How exactly has it been a disaster for us? us. Uh, I mean, I can, MS-13 has killed four more people here than Well, I can tell you that if, if, the, if, Rock, if ISIL could hit us, they would. The San Bernardino people uh, are connected to radical Islam. Uh, right. We've had attacks here at home. Uh, I would just say this about President Trump. I'm proud of him. He did something Obama did not do, and if I'm North Korean, I'm going to think differently about Trump because he told Assad uh, what would happen. Well, he didn't draw a red line. He just acted. So it's a little confusing, though, if you take three steps back from Syria. So yeah. here we are fighting, you know, there are two main players in this. The biggest ones would be the ISIL-back forces and the government of there Assad. Exactly right. And we're fighting both of them. Meanwhile, we're arming a third force which has ties to Al-Qaeda. Okay, so what are the threats to America coming from Syria? Right. Do you agree ISIL is a threat to, to America? Sure. I okay. mean, I, I don't All think right. anyone's supporting okay. ISIS. Right. The, the question is, how, I'm what's not the best way to you are. I'm fight saying them. that the only way to destroy the caliphate is for somebody to go on the ground and kill them. But we seem to be fighting both sides. We, we're so right. No There's one would disagree that Bashar al-Assad is, of course, killing far more members of ISIS than we have. No. Right. No, he said, but now we're fighting him too. So you can he, imagine he's why the average killing, is a He's confused. not killing ISIL. He's killing the opposition. Assad is a threat to the region and eventually a threat to us because he's backed by Iran. But he's a secular leader who's against ISIS. We're right. against he, ISIS. Right. So. He's a puppet of the Iranians. He's sure. Not, that, that, that's okay. And the Russians so are formed too. Iran is run by a religious fanatic. Iran's not a secular state. Iran has missiles on the side of which they write death to Israel. I think the Obama deal with Iran is the worst deal since Munich. I think Assad is a puppet of the Iranians, and the Arabs are not going to accept giving Damascus to the Iranians. As long as Assad is in power, ISIL and Al Qaeda can't be destroyed. I tell you, audience. Wait, but, but, but hold on. I'm just losing. I just want to okay. see if I understand this. So, okay. I can't tell who the main enemy is here. You've said that. ISIS is the ISIL is the main the enemy. The main enemy, I think. And then you said time. Iran is the main enemy, they're but they're right. fighting each other. So uh, not really. So I'm confused. Okay, uh, radical Sunni Islam 
hates the Iranians because they're course. a bunch of Shiites. Right. They hate us too. How are we connected here? Radical Islam and the Sunni side did 9-11. I don't think Iran is going to attack us tomorrow, but I think if they had a nuclear capability, they would share it with terrorist organizations and our homeland would be at risk. They chant death to America, so both pose a threat in a different way. But I'm more worried about Iranian expansion right now than I am ISIL and Mosul and Raqqa. Okay, so I thought you were more worried about ISIS. That's why I was a little bit confused. So, but wouldn't it be the Long perfect time. scenario if we have two enemies who are fighting each other to not intervene in that conflict because we're the beneficiary of our enemies killing each other. Not at all, no. because uh, the bottom line is that Assad's not trying to take down the caliphate. Assad is trying to take down the opposition. The Russians, 80% of their airstrikes have been against Syrian opposition, not ISIL. I think, quite frankly, uh, I, uh, Assad has actually done oil purchases from ISIL. Okay. Anything that get creates imbalance for us is probably good for Iran and Assad. Here's what I would say about the president. He acted decisively when Obama did not. Hope North Korea is paying attention. Um, ISIL is Germany and Assad is Japan. Here's so, what I would do. Okay, I just, I just wanted the implications of what he did are fascinating to me. Your um, compatriot, Senator McCain, said yesterday when asked, well, could this lead to a wider war with Russia, said, in effect, bring it on. <laughs> he did. He said, we'll yeah. beat them. They will lose because we are superior to them militarily. Nobody doubts that. The question is, why would you want to go to war with Russia, too? Are you for that also? Uh, no. What I'm for is giving Syria back to the Syrians. I'm for two things, destroying radical Sunni Islam, ISIL, and other groups inside of Syria so that it won't become a safe haven for terrorists like Afghanistan was before 9-11. And I'm for replacing Assad, not by the Americans, not by the Russians, not by the Iranians, but by the Syrians. And the way you replace him is you train Syrian opposition people to go take him on and eventually beat him because he has a poor hand. Okay, so but that would not include the ISIS allied groups that we're fighting now, and it would not obviously include the government groups we're fighting now, it would not include the Iranians who we That's hope to exactly fight, right. or, the Russians, or the Russians right. who we're happy serious. to go to war with, That's or perhaps exactly. the North Koreans who might want to go with you. I'm losing track of some of the wars. I guess my question is, what would this cost if we did what you're calling for, 7,000 American troops in Syria? How long would they be there, and what would that cost? Well, uh, I think they'd be there long enough to defeat ISIL. They'd have to stay in some level. How long do you think that would take? Uh, as long as it takes to help train a Syrian opposition to get a peace deal in Geneva. The way the war ends is through pl political reconciliation. Right now, Assad is winning. He's backed by Russia and Iran. Assad was on the ropes four years ago, and Obama refused to act against sound military advice to help the Syrians because Assad is a cancer in the region. He's a uh, destabilizing force. He will never be the legitimate leader of uh, Syria in the eyes of most Syrians in the region, so he's got to go. And and he was on the ropes, and you know what? Obama gave him a pass, and now Trump's met, got this mess on his watch. Here's what I tell you. So what would it cost? What would it cost to do what you want to do? 7,000 troops there indefinitely. What would uh, it cost I, I, I can't put a, uh, I, I'll get a number for it. i tell you what it costs. Did you not I, think through what the cost might be when yeah, you called for it? It's minimal compared to the threats we face. So for the amount that we spend in Iraq, which I think most people would say is worse off than it was when we started, we could have educated every single well, person in America through college. I would say, well, th this is the world. How about this? I mean, cost does matter. You can do, see. do you think we'd have been better off to have some troops in Afghanistan before 9-11? I think it's worth thinking through the cost because, again, we spent more than a trillion dollars in a country that's worse than it was before, and our country's getting poorer every this year. So that's a real this concern. Is that's all we have saying. a good TV show. See, here's my view. You think you can be safe by just leaving those people alone? Well, I don't believe that. Okay, well, how do you engage the enemy when all of us stay here? I, I don't think you should. I'm merely saying that money is real, it doesn't just exist I'm on just abstract saying level, and we have a limited amount of it. So it's fair to ask what it might cost. Well, our national security interests can't be um, monetized. What are the threats we face? I think ISIL is a threat to the homeland. The sooner we destroy them, the better off we all are. I think Assad being a puppet of Iran means the war never ends in Syria, and that's not good for us, it's not good for Israel, it's not good for our ally, the King of Jordan. I think on September the 10th, we didn't have one soldier in Afghanistan, right. one embassy, not a dime of aid and we got attacked anyway. I think radical Islam won't stop fighting us even though we want us, we don't want to deal with them. So here's what I'd do if I was president. I'd leave about eight to 10,000 troops behind in Iraq to make sure ISIL doesn't come back. Are you okay with that? Uh, you know, I, I, I suppose. I guess I think, like most Americans, I'm pretty skeptical about starting an entire new war. But you don't want to. Given the track combat. record of the wars that you've supported so far, it's been, I think most people would say, abysmal. Here's what I would say, that uh, the world's better off without Saddam Hussein. The world's better off without um, Gaddafi, I think. Okay. I wouldn't want to live there.
No. Thank heaven we don't have to. We're out of time. Senator, thank you for <laughs> thank joining you. us.